the reason that we need a strong commercial function. Uh, and in fact, it's the highest priority across the whole of government at the moment to build skills and capabilities in the commercial function. Because if you think about it, the levels of interaction we have with the outside world, whether it's in the core uh, running of government services, so that would be things like work program or rehabilitation, whether it's in the underpinning of how government works, uh, most of the IT contracts interact with the outside world, or whether it's simply in the administration uh, of, 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 of how we do things, how we run our buildings, all of this involves uh, uh, interaction with the outside world. And the fact is, uh, over the years, we have, we have withered our commercial capability inside government. And actually, when you examine some of those things, we're not doing them as well as we know we can. So the rebuilding of commercial capability and a commercial function across the government is actually uh, my and Jeremy's and the civil service highest priority in terms of skill building uh, as, we, as we go forward. A um, good way to illustrate this would be to ask the question, will the next phase involve more or less outsourcing? Will we use the outside market more or less as we go forward? I don't think we can answer that question right now. Um, we certainly can't ask the question that uh, would, would say, uh, by the way, once we've decided the answer to the first question, uh, which sectors should we outsource? What should we outsource? What should we hold to ourselves? So these questions are absolutely the core and at the heart of uh, how we need to take government forward into the next few years. So that is why uh, I deeply believe we absolutely need a strong and vibrant commercial function across government. So if we're talking about how the function operates, I would say there are a couple of principles which underlie it. First of all, we have to understand uh, that functions at their heart are in support of what I call business delivery. So they act in support of the departments. That's our role in a function. Now that doesn't mean to say with a lapdog uh, of the department, because what that brings when it's a mature relationship, you can be in support, but of course that support can also bring challenge. So we challenge and support in equal measure. So that's the underlying principles, I think, that we have to construct our functions in. Uh, secondly, if you think about what we have to do when we start to stand up these functions and to take the commercial function, we actually, first, we have to build capability. Uh, we have to build capability, but not built in the center. Uh, we, we have to build capability in the department. So our first job is to oversee the development and building of broadly distributed capability, in this case, in the commercial uh, uh, disciplines. And then when we've got that capability, and as we build that capability, of course, what we also have to do, because we're faced with extraordinarily tough fiscal challenges going forward, is we have to use that capability to deploy cross-government strategies, to, to figure out where we're, for instance, uh, 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 working with a single company uh, across multiple departments which otherwise wouldn't be talking to each other, we can get a much better, more strategic conversation with that particular company if we know we have 50 different contracts in 25 different departments. So, so one is build capability and two is to use that capability then to figure out how we can create a better outcome for the taxpayer by joining it up across government. So those are the two things that we've got to do. So the question of what we have to do uh, sort of right now uh, uh, to build this commercial function, I think, uh, first of all, we should, we should um, uh, acknowledge the progress that's been made. I, um, we are, I think, uh, next month about to welcome 70 or 80 fast stream graduates into the government and they have they're sort of specifically branded as commercial uh, as, as, as commercial graduates we are building career paths for those young people so that we can give them the experiences and as you know i hold experience as particularly important in these delivery functions and commercial is one of them so we're building career paths we've uh, adjusted remuneration models and, uh, uh, and salary structures and such things as we go through as part of that. That is still work in progress, but it's all coming in. 
uh, we have, I think, built some, we've got some apprentices, some commercial apprentices coming in, which is a fantastic thing to do. And I was just talking uh, yesterday to Bill, who, who is in the final stages of interviewing for uh, 20 or hope somewhere between 15 and 25 very senior commercial uh, uh, executives who can come in from the outside and can act as a carder of uh, uh, some of the most senior commercial specialists uh, from the outside world. Now that doesn't mean to say that it's only from the outside that we can get that. We have some fantastic people inside as well. Not enough as it happens. Hence we've got to build it from the bottom, bring it in from the top and continue uh, to develop. So where do we go from here? And I think it's all about the continued development of uh, uh, the skill sets, uh, the giving of experience to people um, uh, so that we can answer the questions. When I say, you know, are we managing this contract in a, in a world-class way? Uh, are we, in, in different part of the forest, are we actually uh, uh, building our capabilities in category uh, strategies? So that we can, when we actually say to departments, we can buy uh, this particular category better and add value to your business, uh, are we actually doing that? Can we be sure we're doing that? And that, of course, takes real skill in building the category strategies. Uh, we have to start building much, much more strategic relationships with our biggest suppliers. We, we simply, you know, it's a sort of price conversation right now because we don't have the confidence, we don't have the expertise, we don't have the depth to understand how uh, we could have a completely different relationship. There are hundreds of millions of pounds of value. By the way, not, it's not a zero-sum game. It doesn't come out of the supplier and come to us. It's actually hundreds of millions of, possibly even billions of pounds of value creation that can take place when government and the biggest suppliers to government come together in a strategic way. That is my aspiration, and it ought to be your aspiration, and we need to build the competence and the confidence to enable us to do that. So, so I think we've got to carry on the journey. We've made great progress. We've got a long way to go, and there is enormous value in this for, for the taxpayer, and enormous satisfaction, I think, I hope, uh, for those of you in the function, because uh, there is no better place to, to learn the skills and the capabilities that can put each of you into a world-class position uh, uh, than here in government. We have more commercial activity going on every day than any company across the UK. We are fantastically privileged, you are fantastically privileged, to, to be in a position where if we can build that skill set, you guys will be enormously enriched and enormously more valuable, actually. Uh, so I think this is a really, really exciting agenda. So I wish you the best of luck.